All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about one of my all-time favorite calculus theorems called the divergence theorem. And the reason I like it is because it's a result that allows us to simplify calculations tremendously. For instance, suppose I ask you to find the surface integral of the vector field f, which is this monstrosity, and not only that, on a very complicated surface, namely the union of the following three things. First of all, the cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 1, the uh, xy plane, z equals 0, and lastly, this plane y plus z equals 2, which you can just do by drawing, first of all, the line um, z equals 2 minus y, and just translating it forward and backward, because there's this x direction missing, this x variable missing. And then what you get in the end is this weird surface here, which kind of looks like an open can. So maybe let me draw it like that. So it would be this. So that would be your surface. And you have to understand, if you wanted to do this surface integral directly, you would have to do a lot of things. You would have to split up S into three regions, into three distinct surfaces, and calculate this horrible surface integral over each piece. But none of that here, because we have the divergence theorem. And what does the divergence theorem say? It simply says the following. It says that the surface integral of this complicated vector field is the triple integral of a much easier function called the divergence of f and over which region? Simply over the inside of s. So triple integral over e of an easier vector field. I like this because I always forget how to calculate surface integrals, but it's much easier to do a triple integral. I know, ironic, because it's very hard to triple integrate, but over and, but however, you're integrating a much easier function. So let's see what happens here. So all we need to do is to um, uh, plug in this formula. First of all, what is the divergence? So let me remind you of this. Divergence of f, all it means is you take the x derivative of the first component, the y derivative of the second one, and the z derivative of the last one, and add those together. So it becomes xy with respect to x plus y squared plus e to the xz squared with respect to y plus sine of xy with respect to z. Yes, it's the sine of our times. Um, so then this monstrosity simplifies. So the x derivative of xy is just y. The y derivative of y squared plus this is just 2y. And the z derivative of this just disappears. So in the end, we just need to calculate the triple integral of the function 3y, which is much easier than the surface integral of the stuff I don't even want to talk about. So what we found so far, the divergence of f is just 3y. And uh, now we just need to figure out what this region E is, because we need to triple integrate over this. So remember, E was this tilted can. And in order to triple integrate over this, we just need to figure out x, y, and z. Well, z is between the smaller function, which is 0, and the bigger function, which is the tilted can, so 2 minus y. And for x and y, well, notice the bottom here is just the disk, and the disk whose boundary is x squared plus y squared equals 1, so which suggests to use polar coordinates. And so the radius would just be between 0 and 1, and the angle is between 0 and 2 pi. 
And because we're using polar coordinates, we just need to replace this y by r sine of theta. And also here, for this 3y, we need to replace it by r sine of theta. So in the end, we get the following. So our answer is, remember, just a triple integral over e of the function 3y dx dy dz. And that then becomes as follows. So the radius is between 0 and 1, the angle between 0 and 2 pi. So let's do integral from 0 to pi, integral from 0 to 1. z is between 0 and 2 minus r sine of theta. And uh, we had the function 3y, which is 3r sine of theta. And then remember the usual r uh, dz, and I think dr d theta. And then we just need to integrate that, so let's do the calculation. And so what we had to calculate is the integral of 3r squared sine of theta, dz dr d theta, but because there's no z here, we can just pull this outside. So this becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to 1, of 3r squared sine of theta, and then 2 minus r sine of theta, and then minus 0, so dr d theta. So this becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1, so I believe 6r squared sine of theta, and then minus 3r cubed, and then sine squared of theta. Again, dr d theta. But each piece we can just split up into two integrals. So this becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine of theta, d theta. Again, integral from 0 to 1, 6r squared, dr. Again, uh, I'm saving some space by not writing this uh, uh, thing down. And then integral again from 0 to 2 pi of sine squared of theta d theta and integral from 0 to 1 of 3r cubed dr. Now the nice thing is while well, the antiderivative is minus cosine of theta and if you plug in at 0 and 2 pi this cancels out so it turns out this is 0 so all we really need to figure out is the integral of those two functions. So minus, now remember the, form, the double angle formula for sine squared. So sine squared is, I believe, 1 minus, 1 half, sorry, 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2 theta. And then an antiderivative of 3r cubed is just... Mm, so from now d theta, antiderivative of 3r cubed is a 3 fourths r to the fourth. Again, that's from 0 to 1. All right, and then, I mean, it, it's a fun theorem. It's just the execution is a little bit uh, not that fun. All right, but we're almost done. So we get, um, again, that was minus times the integral of this. So we get minus, again, antiderivative is theta over 2, and then minus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta, because uh, if you want just to use a u sub, but because we have here we have a 2, we need to divide by 2, and again from 0 to 2 pi, and this just becomes 3 quarters times three quarters and it turns out if you evaluate this at zero and two pi you get zero and lastly what we get is minus so two pi over two minus zero times three quarters and I believe in the end we get minus three quarters of pi 
All right, good. So that was the divergence theorem, my favorite theorem of calculus. Uh, and if you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.